Today we will be building Tai Lee from Avatar The Last Airbender for your next BG3 run. This is an extremely effective crowd control and single target elimination character, combining the best aspects of Monk, Fighter, and Rogue to quickly move in, trip, stun, and kill the enemy with an efficient lethality. I love the idea of a physical crowd control character as opposed to a spellcaster and always loved Tai Lee as a kid because of her, um, her fighting prowess. When starting off your build for Tai Lee, we are going to try and roleplay this character here, so we are going to pick a humanoid character. I'm going to take advantage of the many races that we have here and select the subrace of Wood Elf and get an extra one and a half meters of movement. This is going to be an extremely mobile character, so this just fits right into the RP very well. Moving on to class, we are going to select six levels of Monk, and that will be where we start. So we're going to go ahead and select Monk, and then it gets to the background. Within the show, Avatar The Last Airbender, Tai Lee is an entertainer. She is a member of the circus, but of course you can pick whatever background you'd like. I'm going to stick with entertainer, but as a character with fairly high charisma, you could go ahead and select something like Guild Artisan to, to gain bonuses to Persuasion, a soldier to continue to grow on those athletic abilities that this high dex character will have, um, as well as get a bonus to Intimidation, which is great with that fairly good charisma stat, or you can go with anything else that you'd like. I'm going to stick with Entertainer because, like I said, in the show, this is a member of the circus, literally a professional entertainer. And then as far as abilities go, this is going to be a dex wisdom based character. It fits Monk very well, but it also fits the RP of this character. Uh, this is not a strength based character, somebody who uses agility and dexterous attacks, unarmed attacks, to get advantages. I have dex literally maxed out to 17, as high as you could possibly go. Just a moderate constitution. Within the television show, Tai Lee is considered quite quite a ditz. Not exactly not exactly the uh, the most intelligent character. So we did dump that stat, which allows us to buff wisdom up to 15 and charisma up to 14 for what is a character that a lot of people fawn over within the television show. So I thought it was only fair to give a nice little bump to charisma there. You will note that wisdom and dexterity are both in between. Um, uh, in between ability points here, we will be taking an ability score improvement to get this to 18, 16, and sort of even things out. As far as skill proficiencies go, um, I think the natural push here is into athletics. This is a very acrobatic character. Acrobatics and athletics only make sense. And then we only have the choice between insight, religion, and history based off of our background and our race and our class. So I'm just going to go ahead and go with insight and consider her a fairly intuitive character just because religion and history are intelligence based and uh, that is not what we're going for. So we'll be taking our first six levels in Monk like I previously mentioned. At level two for Monk we're going to get an additional key point like we do at every level. We will also get unarmored movement where we get an additional three meters of movement speed when not wearing armor which we will not be so this will be very useful for us. As far as actions go, we get our monk specific actions. We'll get patient defense, which gives you a little bit more survivability when you're stuck in a bad situation. Step of the wind dash, allowing us to move twice our normal distance for a bonus action. And step of the wind disengage to help get out of trouble. Moving on to level three for monk, we will get our choice of subclass. This is going to be key for this build because we're going to need a lot of the benefits from the way of the open hand. The Way of the Open Hand allows us to get variants of our Flurry of Blows. The first one is Topple, which will allow us to knock enemies prone. The second is Stagger, which will stagger the enemy. As well as Flurry of Blow Push, which will allow us to move people around as we choose, push them into traps, push them off of cliffs, etc, etc. As we move to Monk Level 4, we will get our first feat. And I mentioned in the beginning that we had essentially two um, skills that were or two abilities that were halfway between where they needed to be. You do have the option to select something like Alert here to have Fantastic Initiative. You could also select something like Mobile if you wanted to move around more. That would give you an additional, uh, additional movement speed and get you away from some of those opportunity attacks. But I think it's more important for us to get Dexterity up to 18 as well as Wisdom up to 16. That will help us with both hitting and also making sure that our Flurry of Blow abilities work effectively. Monk level 5 is going to give us perhaps the most key and most roleplay accurate ability for this class. First off we're going to get extra attack but more importantly we're going to get stunning strike. We can we can use a key point 
for our next attack to have a possible chance of stunning the enemy. This is basically the whole thing that Tylee is about. She's all about key blocking. So I think that this makes perfect sense from a roleplay standpoint and leaves us with only one level of monk remaining. So at level six, we get another kind of seminal ability and that's gonna be key empowered strikes. Key empowered strikes allows us to move to add an additional four to seven damage of necrotic, psychic, or radiant damage. I'm gonna choose psychic when I run this build. You can choose whichever one you want, but I think psychic makes the most sense. We are key blocking here. It feels kind of like attacking the nerves of the enemy like literally pinching nerves on them. It feels like psychic damage to me. We're also going to get an additional action, wholeness of body, which is very important because we don't have any key restoration up until this point. Wholeness of body allows us to regain half of our key points and also gives us an extra bonus action for three turns. From this point, we are going to pivot because we need to get more mobility and at the same time, save some key points. So we're going to move over to Rogue. Where is it? We're going to move over to Rogue, which will allow us to select a couple expertise as well as a new proficiency. So I'm just going to deselect all of them here to get started. I think the most fitting is probably acrobatics. This is somebody who literally is a trapeze act in the circus. This is also somebody who has fairly good charisma and is seen as someone that people fawn over in the show. So I'm going to go ahead and give, give her an expertise in persuasion as well. You could, of course, pick anything that you like, but I think that athletics and acrobatics and persuasion are kind of her whole thing, so I'm going to go ahead and go with those. Moving on to Rogue Class Level 2, we get Cunning Actions, which will replace our Monk Actions. Now, I, th I don't know if other people will think this is as important as I do, but I think this is extremely important because these are the same as the Monk abilities, except they don't cost a key point. So we get the ability to hide, dash, and disengage with a bonus action, but it does not cost a key point, which in my mind is well worth it. You do still have patient defense that costs a key point, but that is something that's going to be situational when you're caught in a tough situation when you're caught in a tough spot. Whereas dashing is something that you're gonna want to do a lot to move around or hiding to start a combat or to stay safe or disengaging to stay safe. These will be things that you'll use every single combat and being able to not have them cost a key point, in my opinion, is very useful. And then it's going to be one more level in Rogue, and we're going to take the Larian Special Thief. Not accurate to 5e, but extremely useful in this game. We get an additional bonus action by taking Thief. We also get uh, some resistance to falling damage, which can be useful in very, very few circumstances, but still useful. But most importantly, we get that extra bonus action. Monks have a lot of bonus action abilities, so this is extremely useful if you want to pump out a lot of damage in a small amount of time. Now, we could take four levels of Rogue and get a feat, but I am not going to do that because I think taking Fighter will give us additional crowd control abilities that I really like for the RP and for just the type of character that this is in general, a physical crowd control character. When it comes to the fighting style that you get at Fighter level 1, we could take two weapon fighting, but because this is a character that is never seen with a weapon in the show, I don't think ever, constantly an unarmed fighter, I'm going to take defense just because the one bonus, uh, the plus one bonus to armor class is literally always welcome. We're also going to pick up uh, second wind, which is great, just a free heal as a bonus action, which now that we're a thief, we have two bonus actions, which means we can dish out damage, disengage, and heal all in the same turn, which is just fantastic. Moving on to fighter level two, we're going to get the ability that everybody loves, probably the best ability in the game. We're gonna get action surge. We're immediately getting an extra action. This is fantastic for somebody that has two attacks and two bonus actions. That means that we can attack twice, use both of our bonus actions, and then use action surge to attack twice again, which means that we can absolutely pump out damage. We could also attack four times and then use our bonus actions to get out of, to get out of dodge. Action Surge is probably the best ability in the game. I don't think anybody will complain having it on their character. And then the last level, we will be taking another level in Fighter. So this is only a one feat character, which some people might not love. But I think that the RP aspect and the utility that we get from Battlemaster is more useful. So you don't gain a lot of die for having a lot of levels uh, in Fighter. I think it's one additional die 
every four levels or something like that. It's not a lot. So we start off with four, which is more than, which is most of what you'll ever have in the game. And then we get to choose three maneuvers. I'm going to select disarming attack because I think the imagery of Ty Lee knocking a weapon out of someone's hand, stunning them and having them drop their weapon is very accurate. I'm going to select evasive footwork because this is a character that's not going to have extremely high AC. This is going to be more of a movement based character. So when you are caught in a tough spot you can use evasive footwork this will also use a superiority die to essentially accomplish the same thing that um, you could do with the key point so you can kind of balance what do i have more resources of and you can start rationing them off if you need to use evasive footwork you can if you need to use your monk abilities you can do that as well and then the last one's really up to you i think distracting strike can be very useful um, give your teammates advantage on a character i think fainting attack is probably my favorite the idea of using an action and a bonus action to just immediately gain advantage is huge. We do get a little bit of um, rogue-specific stealth damage here. A little bit of bonus damage. We should get 2d6 bonus damage, and this will add an additional 1d8 bonus, bonus damage with advantage. So that'll be fantastic. You could also get something like maneuvering attack uh, to allow your teammates to move along with you <clears throat> or repost. If somebody misses you, you can immediately attack them back. I'm going to go with Fainting Attack just because I think that that automatic advantage is huge. So let's jump over to some fighting and watch us crowd control basically everybody. All right, here we have Ty Lee ready to go into battle. First, I'm just going to go through the items and equipment. These are mostly um, early to mid-game items, although I think the boots are fairly late-game items. But these are mostly realistic items, so these are items that you could use through a lot of your build. These are, this is not a build that requires the best armor. Of course, when you get to the end of the game, you're going to want to use the Helldusk armor. It's amazing. But these are more realistic choices that you could use for a large portion of your playthrough. First of all, we have the Haste Helm. Gives you momentum for three turns right away to start, which is absolutely fantastic. We have the Graceful Cloth. You gain Cat's Grace, which is advantage on deck saving throws. You also get a plus two to your dexterity, so it was 18, now it is 20, so it's maxed out, which is fantastic. You also get a little bonus to your jumping distance, which, I mean, this is a high movement character. A little bonus never hurt anybody. I have the Servitor of the Black Hand Gloves. This is a this is a Worm Rock uh, item, so this is a little bit later game, but the, the ability is very common throughout the game. This is an additional 1d4 of damage on your punches, which is exceptional. Uh, there's a lot of gloves like this starting from very early on that you can get. So the concept here... It's pretty consistent throughout the game. It also gives you fear. We won't be using that for the build, at least at least not in this uh, example. I have the Bone Spike boots on here. Last, which give you an additional uh, plus one armor class when you are not wearing armor, which I just like. It just fits the, um, it fits the monk build. As far as items go, we have the Surgeon's Amulet, which means we can paralyze people on a crit. I think for somebody who's seen in the anime constantly... Paralyzing people, this just makes way too much sense. We have the Emerald Ring, which gives us an additional three movement, which is huge. We already have a ton of movement for being unarmored, although hopefully none of these are armor. No, they're clothing. Okay, cool. Just checking. <laughs> uh, so it's a ton of extra movement, plus our unarmored movement, which will be absolutely huge. And then to reflect her... Uh, ability to dodge a lot of hits, I gave her the Shifting Corpus Ring, which gives invi invisibility, but perhaps more importantly, Blur. Just buffing up that, uh, that dodge ability that she already has. As far as weapons go, I have the Ritual Dagger, which just gives a plus 1d4 whenever your attack lands with this weapon for the rest of your turn. I like this because it, 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 it gives me the, the imagery of her making her first strike land and then after the first strike lands you're off balance or, or the next strike comes so quickly that it's even harder to avoid than the very first. I also have Stillmaker which gives hold person. This is somebody who once again is constantly stunning people so I think that this just makes a lot of sense. So, Alright to show off her fighting prowess we've picked a fight here in the middle of the square. Uh, I'm going to move away from the Steel Watcher and go and see if I can crowd control his lackeys real quick. First thing we're going to do is see if we can knock this gentleman over. We can. And then with our ridiculous 22 and a half base movement on turn one, I'm going to use an additional dash here and see if we can go and get on over to this lady. Her weapon is now out of her hands. 
Well, I don't care if she punches me. It's not going to do anything. And then we can go ahead and see if we can get this weapon out, too. We do not. But with Action Surge, we can at least give it another shot. So, we now have this person on the ground. We have weaponless fighters. And we still have a free attack, so I'm just going to sneak attack this guy. And they are dead, so we don't need to paralyze them. <laughs> but you do see from the ring there that we had the opportunity to paralyze them if we so choose. I'm just going to select... Uh, I'm going to use our last superiority die and select evasive footwork. Everybody will have disadvantage on attacks against me. And we will see what happens. I'm just going to go ahead and occupy this guy with Zuko. As we slowly build out that avatar team, I have Zuko with us, of course. This character was smart enough to pick up their weapon, but they did waste the turn doing so. And of course, if we had a full party, we could slap them around a little bit with the rest of the team, but I only brought two with me. As a monk, we do get the ability to deflect missiles, which is great, although that one ensnared me. So let's topple this person. Or not. We'll try that again. Second time's a charm, and then we get a little bit of sneak attack bonus damage. And then we can't move. Oh, we can. Oh, okay, we saved against that. Sorry, I thought that we didn't save. And we can use a kind of our seminal ability and try and stun this character. Who is now stunned. And will have nothing to do on their next turn. <laughs> Steel Watcher has been occupied. Character remains stunned, which is absolutely fantastic. We'll get a free... I don't have advantage when they're stunned. Oh, they came out of stun. Alright, we'll stun them again. Maybe not this time. Alright, we'll knock them. We'll knock them on the ground. <laughs> so they're dead. And we have all this movement range to move all the way back. To the steel washer that's been occupied. It is now stunned, I think. Is it stunned? It is not stunned. We just had a crit. <clears throat> I don't know if steel watchers can actually get stunned. But as you can see, Tylee basically just I don't know, she only had one attack sent her way, or two attacks sent her way, with three people there. So absolute crowd control like Savant. And then we would be able to clearly beat up on this one Steel Watcher. That's the power of Tylee. If you like this video, go ahead and uh, subscribe. If you have any tips or tricks that you would like me to, to, to touch on, please let me know. Please comment if there's any other better build options that you think for any Avatar characters, especially Tylee. Otherwise, have a nice day. Thank you for watching.